Welcome to the Jag War Podcast, a show where we discuss all things related to Duval County's finest NFL football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Duval, baby! Hey everybody, it's Andrew and welcome to episode 93 of the Jaguar podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a quick recap of the Jacksonville Jaguars 2020 NFL Draft. But before we start, I want to give a quick shout out to all of our healthcare workers, our doctors, nurses, firefighters, police officers, servicemen and women. Thank you so much for all of your service during this coronavirus crisis. We really appreciate it and stay safe. All right, let's jump into it. So my initial thoughts on the Jaguars 2020 NFL draft, I was a little underwhelmed, to be honest. Um, I think we could have done a lot better. Um, I'd probably grade this draft at a C plus at best. I mean, you know, I guess I was a little surprised that Dave Caldwell wasn't more aggressive in this draft, especially considering all of the, you know, original 2017 veterans that got us to the AFC championship game, like Calais Campbell, Barry Church, um, you know, Jalen Ramsey, AJ Boye, Dante Fowler Jr., all those, you know, original guys that, you know, got us to the AFC championship game. He pretty much traded them or, or cut them. So uh, it's really unfortunate. I think, you know, I just wish that, you know, we had been more aggressive, traded up, Maybe, you know, gone after uh, Akuda at three or, um, you know, maybe, you know, going after Makai Becton, who is really, you know, a stud offensive lineman, you know, left tackle uh, out of Louisville, who I, I think, you know, probably could have been our next Tony Baselli, honestly. But, um, you know, we, we kind of played it safe. A lot of defensive players that were drafted. You know, uh, I believe out of the 12 picks, we had seven defensive players that we drafted. So pretty heavy defensive draft. Um, and there were some positives from the draft. I mean, we definitely needed to draft at the cornerback position. You know, um, we also drafted at the middle linebacker position, which I think was was great. And we also got a pretty good uh, edge rusher as well. So, um, you know, not a terrible draft, but I definitely thought we could have you know, done better, uh, been more aggressive. You know, I, I will say from the offensive side, I feel like we could have um, gone for Jalen Hurts at, you know, pick number 42 to hedge at the quarterback position. And, you know, the reason why I say that is because we just don't know what's going to happen with Gardner Minshew. Um, you know, I think the jury's still out. Just heart and balls, man, heart and balls. And I want him to be successful, but, you know, we just don't know yet whether he's going to be a franchise quarterback or not. So uh, I think it would have been a good idea to go with Hertz, but um, we didn't go that route. Um, you know, I think we went with a, a wide receiver, but um, you know, uh, not a terrible draft, like I said, but let's, let's kind of go through uh, the picks here uh, for Jacksonville in round one, pick number nine, uh, cornerback CJ Henderson from Florida. Um, in round one, pick number 20 uh, at defensive end, K. LeVon Chasen from LSU. In round two, pick number 42, uh, wide receiver LaVisca Chenault from Colorado. Then we have in round three, pick number 73, uh, defensive tackle uh, Devon Hamilton from Ohio State. Then we go into round four, pick 116. We go with uh, offensive tackle Ben Barch. From uh, St. John's, then in round four, uh, 137th pick, we go with uh, cornerback Josiah Scott from Michigan State. And uh, then we go to the 140th pick in the fourth round. We go with middle linebacker Shaquille Quarterman from uh, Miami. And then in round five, uh, pick number 157, we go with safety Daniel Thomas from Auburn. Um, Another pick here in round number five, 165th pick, we go with wide receiver Colin Johnson from uh, Texas. 
Um, then in round, uh, you know, late or kind of in the middle of uh, round number six, we go uh, with Jake uh, Lutton from Oregon State at the 189th pick. And uh, we finish up with two more, uh, one in round six, uh, the 206th pick. We go with tight end Tyler Davis from Georgia Tech. And then we close out in round seven uh, with uh, Chris Claybrooks from Memphis at cornerback for the 223rd pick overall. So, um, yeah, you know, 12 picks in this draft. Seven of them were defensive players. Five were uh, offensive uh, players. And, uh, you know, I think it was okay, like I said, but um, very, very uh, defensive-focused draft. So, um, you know, definitely needed to fill some holes uh, at linebacker. Uh, We did with Shaquille Quarterman. um, Also drafted, you know, um, kind of, um, it was in what round five with, uh, Daniel Thomas at safety. And then we got, uh, another corner in round four with Josiah Scott, which I think was good. So definitely picked up some depth in the secondary. I think that was a good move. Um, but you know, again, I think we really missed at the quarterback position and uh, left tackle position. And you know, why I feel so strongly about that, especially at the left tackle position, is because Cam Robinson will be an unrestricted free agent uh, after the 2020 season. So, you know, who knows what what's going to happen with Cam Robinson? Um, you know, I think he's been kind of unreliable. He's been injury prone, and um, I just didn't think he had a good uh, you know 2019 season. A bunch of penalties. Um, you know, gave up, you know, I think eight sacks, pretty much the same amount of sacks that Jawan Taylor gave up. Uh, and Jawan Taylor's a rookie. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's not good for, for Cam Robinson. Um, and, um, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a problem, I think, for Jacksonville. And I think even with, you know, Ben Barch, and I'll go into a little more depth into this, uh, you know, in terms of the player analysis, which I'll do in, in, in the next episode. Um, I just don't think we really picked up anybody in this draft at the tackle position that's, you know, going to be our, our guy, you know, our next Tony Baselli. So I think that's going to be a problem. I think it's going to be a problem for Gardner Minshew. Um, a lot of his sacks and fumbles came from the backside or his blind side, the left tackle side. So, you know, that's going to be a real concern. And, you know, Cam Robinson's been pretty injury prone, in my opinion. You know, he's had some problems with his knee. So, We'll see what happens, but, you know, those are my thoughts, uh, you know, in a nutshell on the Jags uh, NFL 2020 draft. Um, You know, let me know how you feel about the draft. Uh, Leave me a comment on the YouTube video or podcast episode. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. If you're bored, come by my Twitter feed, at Jaguar Podcast. I'll be putting up some surveys and uh, additional content there uh, to keep you from going crazy during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, you know, this is a podcast as well. So you can pretty much find this podcast wherever you find podcasts. Um, if you stop by Apple podcast, uh, leave me a review and some feedback. It always helps me when I put together these, uh, episodes, you know, stay safe from the coronavirus, wash your hands. Don't go crazy. Go Jags. And I'll see you next time. You could hear it in our ground. Intimidation on to keep their hearts racing. Meeting other teams live on TV front of the nation. Spectacular defensive scheme. This episode is available on the Jaguar Podcast YouTube channel. So if you stop by, make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. Also, these episodes are available on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other major podcast distributors as well. So if you don't mind, please leave me a review and some feedback. I'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, my Twitter handle is at Jaguar Podcast. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. This is Andrew signing off. Cheers. Cheers.